All right, welcome back to another turn of uh, The Great Crisis of Frederick II. Well, I say a turn, it may be just a phase. I don't know, it's gonna depend on what the uh, <laughs> what comes out of the, the chip cup at this point. So if you remember from last time, the Prussians in the first turn got to take two phases. They did that, they were able to make some advances um, over here and they kind of got caught up in, I think it's uh, yeah Dresden here and Thorn up here. So the there's uh, units that kind of prevented them from advancing or even taking these spaces. So we will see if that what happens there this time. So with that said, I'm gonna grab the chit cup and we should have two Austrian and two Prussian chits in there in the uh, intern chit. So, and remember if we draw that intern chit, it will end the turn right then and there. So it could be a very quick turn if I draw that. So let's see. Uh, let's pull one of these chits and see who gets to go first. <laughs> and it is the in turn marker. So, all right. So the in turn marker, that's going to end the turn. Um, nothing's going to happen here. So what we'll do is I'm going to set this marker on the turn track. Um, might as well leave these in the cup because what's going to happen is we're going to advance the... Uh, turn marker when we get to turn three. We have a little bit of housekeeping to do, I think. I, I don't think it's going to be a lot since nothing even happened. So, and again, this is a summary sheet that I printed off Board Game Geek. So let's look at the turn in chip when you pull it. And it says, return discarded cards to your decks, then reshuffle. The uh, Prussians had three cards. That none of those are discarded, so that doesn't happen. Uh, the events, the Russia peace check, the draw victory, there's no draw victory. We're not anywhere near the end of the turn marker over there. The conditions are that if Russia, well, it's not Russia. Well, it is Russia. So when Russia is in the game starting in 1762, we would roll a D6 and on a one, that would be a draw. And the other way for a draw is if we get all the way up to the end of 1763. So none of the turn end conditions, um, none of those, none of the events, I should say, uh, the victory events, or the draw victory, is what I'm trying to say, does not come into play here. So the next thing on this list is slide the turn marker to a new turn. So just like that, with nothing happening, we go into turn three, which is a um, winter turn. And that's going to be something completely different. So this will be the um, sequence of play for the winter turns. It's a little bit different. So you hit these winter turns. It's a totally different sequence of play, and there are, it looks like there are um, six phases here that we go through, and all nations will be involved. Even the ones that aren't involved in the war yet will actually get to do some of these things, if not all of these things. We start at the top, and it says um, each player may use one winter card. Now, the only player with cards at this point, um, that's the Prussians, so their winter card... Condition in step one of the winter turn. So let's see if you can see that. Yeah. But the effect says choose an enemy commander on the board and move them to their armies to their army's commander reserve. So probably do want to play this one for the Russians. So um move an enemy commander on the board to the reserve. So I'm gonna guess that they would probably want would want to move one of these Austrian leaders uh, back to their board. So and probably one down here where they have this whatever's getting ready to happen. Or did they? Yeah, yeah. Let's grab that one. So I can grab it. So we're gonna take this one and it's gonna go to the back into the reserve over here for Austria. And so now we played that card, and I'll put it in the discard pile for the Russians, which is over here. And that leaves them with two cards. We'll put those back, and we will go back to the sequence of play for the winter turn again. So that was the only side that had cards, other than the army, really, or the side, yeah, because only alliances have cards. Transfer commanders. Each nation, again, even if not at war, one random commander... Uh, from the reserve box, or 
let's see, let's make I'm sure I'm getting this right. One random commander. Commander reserve box to the unit reserve box. So the unit reserve box, I believe. Yeah, so you can see here that this is the unit reserve box. And then did I put this guy in the right box when I played that card? Let's make sure we did that right. So it goes to the commander reserve. And this back row is the commander commander reserve. So that did go in the right spot. So what we're going to do, what it's telling us is take uh, a commander from the this reserve and move it to the unit reserve, which means they can then go out onto the board. So again, for each nation, each nation. So let's do that. And we'll just start over here with Austria. And what I'm going to do to make this a little easier for me, and these chits have to come out anyway because the turn ended, so I'm just going to take all these chits that will go back in the next turn and put them with this in turn marker over here. And that means that one of these Austrian leaders will come, will be put into the unit reserve. So we just pulled, who did we just pull? Let's see if we can see that. That is. That's hard to see there. That is, I can't see it. it. The lighting in here, when I do these recordings, the lighting is not the best in the world. I don't know. It's a big long name that starts with the piece. I'll just remember that. I can't see who this. So we're going to put the um, Austrian leaders into this cup, and one of those will go into the reserve. We'll just draw one out. And they're going to hope that it's somebody with a high tactical rating. And it is Laudan. I'm seeing that right. His uh, tactical rating is two. And then uh, that other rating is four. So a two and a four. And so that's going to go into this reserve. I'm going to put it, since they've already got uh, one leader in the reserve, the unit reserve, I'm going to put that right behind it. And so these other units, get them all out. These other leaders go back into this reserve box. And then we just go on down the line. So we go to the French player next. We will randomly draw a French leader. And it is a 1-8. Uh, a 1-8 leader, so we'll put that into the their leader, or the unit reserve. And I'm going to put these back real quick. Into the commander reserve. So they still have four in command, commander reserve. And so, okay, so we did uh, Austria and France. We'll go to the Holy Roman Empire. They only have one leader in there, already in the unit reserve. So these guys don't even have command reserve, commander reserves. The Russians way over here, they do have uh, commander reserves. So let's grab one of those. Give it a shake and pull out a leader. And that leader has a 1-8 rating. So we'll stick him in the unit reserve so we can bring that leader out there are other commanders back into the commander reserve. And then we still have Russia. So let's just grab there's it's like five that they have in the commander reserve. I'm gonna bring those out. Looks like they have a commander also in unit reserve already out there, so. In addition to that leader, they have a 1-4 leader. Not a, not a very good leader. That's going to come out. And then we will put the remaining commanders back in the reserve. I'm going to put them down facing me so I can read them easier if I can read them at all. Like I said, it's really hard to read in here, the lighting. 
makes it easier for you to see than when you watch this, but it's making it really hard for me to see. So this is uh, Great Britain, Hanover. They have three liters. We will grab one. And it is a two, four liter, and that will go into the unit reserve, and the other two will go back to their commander reserve. All right, I think we hit everybody. So let's see, it looks like it. We have no more left, so we will go on to the next step. That was transfer commanders. Now we go to step three, which is mobilization and recovery. Again, all nations are involved in this, not just the ones at war. Um, the Austrian alliance player mobilizes and recovers first, and it looks like um, count the unbesieged resource points for each nation, and you get one resource per space controlled. So for the um, for the Austrian player, they are currently at, and I'm wondering now if I. Uh, when Prussia took uh, Leipzig over here, I'm wondering if I deducted that from from this resource space track. I don't think I did. I think they only have four at this point. And again, we're talking about, well, that was for, uh, not Austria, that would be for Saxony, right? Uh, no, that's Austria. Because it's got the... No, it's Saxony, because it's got the green bar. So remember, green is for Saxony. So Saxony... Um, I don't see a... I don't even see a... I don't even see a marker for them, which is strange. That was Hanover down there, England. Or rather, Great Britain. Um, so, anyway. Um, Alright, so, yeah, it is, um, it's in orange, so that's, that's what I should be looking at. The Saxon, uh, I say it's in orange, and that's what I should be looking at, but that doesn't look quite right either, for some reason. Um, anyway, so I, I know I didn't move. Uh, this marker down. So this really should have been on four. So looking at that, that would mean that the Austrians should have four resource um, markers. They have looks like they have one, two, three, four. I just knocked that stack over. No, that is a Saxony um, resource marker. I don't know why the Sac... I don't... Let me see. All right, let's put that back. The... So there's... Let me, let me resync here. So there's the Austrian marker, which is here. The French marker is there. And then all it leaves is the... Holy Roman Empire, Saxony, and Sweden. So I'm guessing they don't provide markers for the Holy, Roman, the Holy Roman Empire or Sweden. So I guess this is the Saxony marker. So really, this is the one that should have come down to three because they lost Leipzig. All right, so going back, let's go back to the Austrians. They should have five. And so we have one, two, three, four, five. So they have those five, and I don't think this, this is Saxony up here again. So, um, so they have five. So those are unbesieged. None of those are under siege. So we can pay one point. I'm going to get grab a, a D6 here so I can keep track of how many points they have. Um, so they have five. They can pay one to mobilize a unit from the reserve and put on the map, or they can pay one to recover two depleted units. I know they have depleted units. We're going to spend one of those points to recover these two units. 
in Dresden, so we'll do that. Um, I don't think they had any other depleted units. They had recovered this one last time. So that is it. So they have four points remaining that they can bring. Uh, their units are up here. So they can bring out... They can bring out... Um, they can pay one to bring out one unit. And I'm guessing that includes leaders. So... I believe they can only go into... Friendly spaces and not where there are besieged units. So yeah, it has to be uh, it has to be under your control. It must be connected to uh, your line of communication. Only one unit can transfer to a non-resource space. A maximum of two units can transfer to a resource space. So any number of units can transfer to an off-map box. So it's gonna make it a little more difficult to transfer. Like you can't just bring in a bunch of units and. Like I couldn't spend four points and just put a big stack up here, for instance, is what they're trying to tell me. So we are down here. We got a, got a problem developing down here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend two more points and bring two units down to here. So let's do that. Let's just grab two units. And I'm going to bring them into here. So I have two points. I'm going to bring one other unit. I'm going to spend a point to bring one more unit here. And I have one more point. I'm going to grab a leader. These are equal. They're one four units both. So I'm going to just grab a leader and put them here. And that is going to be the, um, that's going to be what the Prussians do. So, and of course, I think I just did that wrong. I think we should have started with the Austrians. I think that's what, <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Austrian alliance mobilizes and recovers first. Uh, I remember that next time. I don't, I'm not going to matter a whole lot here, I don't think. Now we'll go to the Austrians who should have gone first. So they should have five. Let me get that D6 back out here. They have five. But, um, unbesieged. I don't think the Austrians had any besieged. This is the uh, Saxony again. So, they'll get to count all five. So, they'll get to bring out five points worth of reinforcements. It works the same way. Um... And I'm going to spend... That is not a resource... This is a resource um, port. I'm going to spend two to bring out. Um, do I want to bring out another leader? No, I think I'm just going to bring out two units. Actually, I am going to bring out a leader. We're going to bring out this guy. And that's two units for that port. And I am going to spend, um, it's one for a regular space, right? I'm going to spend one to bring another unit out to this space. And I'm going to spend these final two to bring two units out to this space. All right, so now we did the Austrians. <laughs> I don't think it really matters a whole lot here that I did the Prussians first. It may later on in the game, but for now, I think we're good. So uh, let's just let's just go in, in order here. So we'll go down to France next. And of course, France has three. Um, nothing being besieged, so we'll show that they have three points they can spend. And they're just going to... I think I'm just going to grab... Um, gonna grab a leader for each of these, so that's two. That'll bring us down to one, and I'll just grab another unit. Oops, I'll grab another unit and bring it down here. So that's going to be 
Uh, France, the Holy Roman Empire has just the one resource. So the one point they can spend, they only have a leader out here, so we might as well get him out. We'll just put the leader here. We would go to Saxony. Now Saxony does have three, but they do have um, a besieged resource here, so that's only going to give them two they can pull from because it says count unbesieged. I don't think, well, that is not a resource for it. So they have, would have three, but they only have two. They only have two units, so they will bring those out. Has to go in a space though that is not, that is in a line of communication and not under siege. So, is going to be troublesome. I don't think they can bring anybody out. They can't put anybody here because it's being sieged. They can't put it here because there is no line of communication to this city. Um, this is a resource fort that is under siege. Now, I don't know. This can certainly trace back to that resource, but with it being under siege, does that count? Gonna have to check, I'm not really sure. That's going to block, um, if it's under siege, from what I can understand, that's gonna block line of communication to this city. So I don't think there's anywhere these can go. I don't see anywhere else they can go. So I'm gonna skip them. If that's wrong, let me know in the comments below, but we're gonna keep going here. We are gonna go into Sweden. So Sweden has one, uh, two. They have. Do they have a marker? They don't have a marker either. So they have two resource um, markers or resource spaces is what I'm trying to say. So they only have two units in Sweden, and they can put both of those in Stralsund up here. So they're going to do that because why not? And that's there too. That's everybody in the on the Austrian side. And then we go back to the Prussian side, which is where I should have gone. Um, so we did Prussia. So Great Britain has they should have five according to this. They have three here, four with Hamburg, and five with Hanover. So they have five. They do have five. Bring this out. Um now, the worst thing about the off-map, any number of units can be transferred to an off-map box. So, we certainly want to put two units in Hanover. And we'll do that. We'll pay our two points and put our two in Hanover. Uh, we want to put two more in Hamburg. We will do that. And then, um, it said any number of units may go into an off um, you know what I wanted to do? Let's not bring a unit out. Let's bring this leader out. And then we'll bring a unit into the off-board area. I didn't see that leader there, and he was just put in from the lap from that other part of the phase. And then all that leaves is the Russians. So they only have an off-board area. They only have... Um, well, see, that's where this other green marker was. <laughs> This is the Russian marker, it's not the Saxony marker. I don't know why I don't have a Saxony or even a Swedish resource marker. That's going to drive me crazy. I'm probably going to have to make one if the game didn't come with one. All right, so they have four, so they can bring out four units and put them in the off. Uh, okay, so this guy, we want to bring out a leader for sure, but we only have one in the unit reserve, and then we want to bring out, uh, and I said Russia, we're dealing with, Four, so we've already spent one, two, three, four. All right, I think that you know, <laughs> gonna need some double checking on this turn. It is my first winter phase, though, so that's part of the problem. So we mobilized to say, okay, well. Yeah, mobilize any space, under control of that nation, not under siege. 
space connected to their line of communication network. Yeah, we did our, we did that. Uh, recover, not isolated, uh, not enemy controlled, not under siege. So we did our recovery for Russia. They met those requirements. We didn't do it for Saxony because they don't. So we move on to winter depletion. And here it says, roll 1d6 for each besieging unit. 1d6 for each isolated unit. Uh, and remember, these units, I guess they're considered to be in the fort. I don't think that we, that we roll for... I don't think we roll for those units. I think they're... Remember it said if a unit is in a fort, they are not considered isolated. And then a unit that is both besieging and isolated rolls only once. You roll a 1 or 2, that's 1 damage. And you check the entire stack. So... These guys are actually considered to be inside the fort because they are under siege, so they would not roll for this uh, winter depletion. So it's only besieging units. So again, I'm going to grab, we'll grab a green. Oh, we're not just waiting. <laughs> we'll grab a, a green disc here and say these guys are besieging, and up here these guys are besieging. And I think that's it. So they're going to have to roll. Each unit's going to have to roll, and. They're not isolated, so we don't have to worry about subtracting the one. It's just we're just we're just gonna roll. And so on a one or two, they'll take damage. So let's start up here. And I'm just gonna bring them down here and we'll just I'll roll for them and then move them back up one at a time. We'll make it easy because uh, this unit. So we'll do the leader first, and we'll just roll five for these all at once so that I can let you see the die rolls. So that's going to bring us, and take us back to the other side. Uh, so here, this is for the leader. He's got to roll higher than a two. He rolls a three, so he's back up here in Thorn. And now I'm just going to roll 5d6. And so, uh-oh. <laughs> That looks like one, two, three units are uh, are depleted, damaged here, I guess it says, the winter depletion. So, so they're depleted. Um, I'll switch back real quick to show you what I did. I just simply moved the leader and the two units that were not depleted are here. The three that were depleted are now here. So that's the besieging forces there, and I'll just get this disc out of the way. And then we come over here and do the same thing. So there's two units. We have one leader. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to roll for the leader first. He rolls a three, so the leader survives. So we will move that leader back to... Um, I will just move him back up here for now. And now I'm going to roll seven, um, 76 for the remaining units. Let you see this, of course. And there are one, two, three units that suffer depletion. So I will show those. We have the leader up there that's okay. And these units are also okay. But these three were depleted. All right, and I think um, that's the only ones that were under siege or besieging. Uh, so it wasn't so bad for the Austrians, really. All right, so we, we did uh, step number four. Now we go to step five, which is discard and draw. Uh, draw cards depending on count the controlled resource spaces for all of your armies currently in the war. So this would be for the alliance sides um, instead of nations now. Then you have the number, you round down, and that's the limit you can have in your hand. You may discard tactics cards. If you have more than your limit, you must. 
Then after discarding, add your used and discard, you need to reshuffle. So then draw cards from your deck until you reach the limit. So let's start. Doesn't tell us who to start with. <laughs> do that again though. We'll just start with the Prussian Alliance. So they still have two cards in their hand. And their resource points. Um, so this is total amount for the alliance, did I say? Or just resource spaces total. Can count the controlled resource spaces of all your armies. So it, it would be for the alliance. In this case, it's simply um, six and five, which is 11. So 11, uh, okay, no, so 11, uh, and it said divide by two, so it's uh, five rounding down, right? Is that what they said? Have this number run down, so five. So I think that's saying we can have five in our hand. Um, have this number rounding down. So 11, yeah, having it down is five. So they have two. I don't want to discard either one of those. I'm going to keep those. So they can draw three more cards. So let's draw their three cards. The first one is like another um, rapid advance. I think they have two of these now. They do. So that's one. The second one is flanking maneuver at the start of a battle. Disable the effect of one forest or wetlands card. That's two. And then the third that they draw is the exact same thing. And I did shuffle these, so that's kind of hard. And that should give them a total of one, two, three, four, five tactics cards in their hand. All right, and then we do the same thing for the um, Austrian Alliance. We only have uh, Austria in battle now, and they have five. So five have uh, rounding down would be two. So they can have two cards in their hand. So we will draw all those cards. So their first card is a rapid mobilization. See if you can see that. Um, and their second card is rapid advance. So that will give them plus two to their action points after they roll. And we will put the Austrian going to put them up here next to the uh, Prussian cards, which you can't see. They're off board, but I can see them. I know they're there. And uh, that is the discard and draw. So they have to, they have five. Uh, turn in phase. Uh, again, we're checking for uh, the Russian piece and the uh, draw victory. Well, that's not going to happen because we are nowhere near that. And then the next thing we do, of course, is slide the turn track marker forward. So what I'm going to do, what that means is all the previous um, action chips that we had, those are going to go back in the cup. So we still have the turn ends going to go back in there. Two Prussian and two Austrian army markers go in. And then we are going to slide the game turn marker up to, um, looks like the beginning of 1757, turn four, and that's going to put this uh, French marker into the cup. And so, because um, we are running long, and I need to go back and check some of the things I did to make sure I did them right, and uh, like I said, it was the winner. <laughs> kind of didn't work out the way I thought it would. We, we didn't even have a turn two, really. We just went right into the winner phase because I drew that end turn marker. So, I'm going to set the uh, that cup aside. When we come back, we will start turn four, it is. We now have the French uh, are now in the cup, so they could possibly come out. The Austrians still haven't taken a turn yet. And um, that is it. That is going to do it. Uh, please, if you saw something that I did wrong, let me know down below. And I will look forward to seeing you back next time.